Did humans really evolve from ape-like creatures? We hear a great deal about ape men. In fact, I would say all of the organisms we hear about that are supposedly uh, evolved over millions of years, nothing draws the attention uh, of man more than ape men. We are, for example, less interested in the evolution of clams than we are of humans. So that really catches the attention of a lot of people, particularly a lot of young people in our schools. And I think it's quite clear from scripture that God didn't make any ape men. You know, Jesus Christ was once asked about divorce and in the con uh, context of answering that question, he said, have you not read, or we might translate, don't you folks read your Bibles? He that made them made them in the beginning, male and female. And it's for this reason that a man would leave his family and cleave to a wife and the two become one flesh. The whole basis of marriage is based on God's creative work creating man, both male and female, in the very beginning. It's evolutionists then that create, if you will, in their minds, the ape men. And uh, how do they do this? I submit there's really only three ways to make an ape man. One would be when they find apes in the fossil record, and indeed they are there, they could take some of these apes and sort of upscale them, pick a feature about them that uh, they think might be more human-like than other apes. Uh, Lucy is an example of that kind of effort. In fact, if you just look behind me right now, you'll see that 40% of the skeleton of a creature called Australopithecus afarensis, commonly known as Lucy. Here is a creature, clearly ape, that has been upscaled in the minds of evolutionists to be human-like. It's a small, chimp-like creature, somewhere between three and four feet tall. It has an ape-like hip, which means it couldn't have walked the way humans did. Uh, its arms fit into its shoulder sockets. It had long curved fingers and toes that are far more consistent with that of an ape than a human. So Lucy does not represent an ancestor of man, and many evolutionists now concede that, yet it continues to be the most influential of the ape men. Another approach is the other way around. You can find humans in the fossil record, and yes, indeed, there are human skeletons in the fossil record, uh, Neanderthal man being a good example. And uh, Neanderthal man has been scaled down. When we think of the word Neanderthal, we think of primitive. It's, he's anything but. They were big individuals, I believe, human beings who lived during that rough period of time right after the flood, a brief ice age of a few hundred years. And they clearly led a rough life. Lots of broken bones, but interesting, interestingly, those broken bones have been set. So uh, they, they knew how to set bones when they were broken. I don't think you've ever seen an ape do anything quite like that. Uh, another thing that uh, uh, Neanderthal man has been associated with is uh, formalized burials. Uh, jewelry have been, uh, has been found with uh, Neanderthal man. Tools, even what appear to be musical instruments, wooden flutes with holes in the appropriate position. The skeleton of the uh, Neanderthal man is human in every respect. There are certain differences, just as we'd see differences in uh, the skeletons of es Eskimos and uh, uh, other groups of people living today, pygmies, uh, Maasai warriors, uh, Australian aboriginals. There are distinctive features, but all well within the range of modern human uh, variability. Uh, there is a third way that uh, we can produce an ape man, and that is to uh, take a Piltdown Man, where a skull of a uh, human uh, skull bones of a human were combined with the mandible or the jaw of an ape, uh, specifically a female orangutan. And this crude attempt, which turned out to be a hoax, fooled most evolutionists for about 70 years. It shows you how bias enters into this whole issue. My bias, and yes, I have one too, is God's Word. I'd rather see us look to God's Word, where God has clearly said that He has created us in His image. We have the ability to communicate with him through prayer, and he has the ability to communicate with us. And no other creature has that unique ability. It cleanly separates us from all other creatures, including apes. God said he created us to worship him.
and he to be our Heavenly Father, and we to be the sheep of his pasture. I hope that's the conviction of all of you. Thank you.